Today we're going to make some dovetails on the Lay D4R jig that I purchased. Uh, if you are looking at purchasing this jig, I have a video I just made on my channel um, about how to assemble it and how to get it going so it's all set. Uh, it's ready to rock and roll. It's clamped down to the table. We're going to start making our dovetails in one second. We're going to do a simple 8 inch box and we're going to do dovetails on all four sides. Before I get started, I'd like to ask you to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to purchase this jig or anything else you see in this video, use the Link in the comments below, it helps support this channel. With that being said, let's get going. This is the material we're gonna be using for the project. It's half inch cedar boards, five and a half inches wide, eight inches long. I'm making it out of cedar uh, because I'm gonna put a bottom at the bottom of the box for my wife when we're done with this and I'm gonna make it a planter box for her as a surprise gift. We're gonna be using the two dovetail bits right here, the 80-8 and 140-8. You'll notice the dovetail bit's a little different from the one they talk about for the sample in the manual. Um, that's only because these boards are half inch, not three quarters like the manual talks about. And we're gonna be using the router bushing on that came with the package here. We're going to label the inside and outside of all our boards. Uh, there's a labeling scheme they talk about in the manual. Um, but when you look at a lot of videos and a lot of guys who do this all the time, you can just put an I for inside and an O for outside to keep everything organized. And that's what we're doing here. If you've never put a collar on your router before, I'm going to show you how to do that. If you have, fast forward. So we're going to get our adapter here. We're going to slide it down. Uh, that actually comes with the kit. It's going to go from a half inch to a quarter inch bit. We're going to slide this guy in, tighten it down. This is a special adapter, um, so you'll be able to center everything, which you'll see in one second. We're then gonna get our router base, and we're gonna slip it on. Just like so, tilts up all the way, then we're gonna lock it in place. The goal is you want this opening perfectly centered with the uh, center of your collet. If not, it's not gonna be your bit is not gonna be in the center of this little hole right here. It's gonna be off to the side and it's gonna affect your ability to cut properly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lo loosen the plate at the bottom of our router just a little bit. These are all built to have a little bit of wiggle just for this uh, adjustment right here. You can see how it moves. That's what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna make sure it's perfectly centered. We're just gonna go and we're gonna push down. And this automatically centers everything to where it should be, right over the collet. And then we're just going to tighten this down. This is one little step, but it's going to save you a lot of headaches if you have a problem. Because with dovetails, we want to make sure everything is perfectly tight. With our base off, we have a half inch collet. The kit came with a collet adapter. I have the factory one right here that came with my DeWalt router. It doesn't fit the factory uh, lay bit as good as theirs does. We're going to get it, slip it in. Then we're going to get our base, slide it down. Lock it in place, push this down about yay far, lock it in place. You wanna make sure with this that you don't put your bit in first, you wanna put your collar in first and then you slide your bit through. Because if you had your bit in first and then you put your collar on, it's not gonna go through. So make sure that's pushed down. We could even come up a little bit here to have a little more working room. Tighten everything in place, like so. Then you can go and drop it right back down to where it should be. Lock it in place, get our bit, drop our bit in. And it's kind of tricky because there's not a lot of room to work down here. Um, but we're going to do what we got to do to get it in place. Make sure you have your wrench and get down there and tighten it really good and snug. Next up, we're going to get the assembly. We're going to make some adjustments on the side here. You want to make it so you have your through dovetails uh, side. You're able to see everything on. That's how you know you're on the right side of this jig uh, and it's operating correctly. This is on the left side. You can see the picture of your through dovetail. You can see this little indicator mark right here. There's the exact same one on the other side. We're just gonna loosen these and slide it down. Now there's one mark here. And if you don't look here, there's three other ones. You don't use these three for what we're gonna be doing here. Every time you're doing normal dovetails, 
this is what we're using on both sides. So we're gonna go, we're gonna get our half inch indicator and we are gonna align the half inch right on that mark there on this side and do the same on the right side. Next what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a board with the outside part facing outward and see what our layout is gonna look like with these dovetails. We're gonna put the board here, we're gonna turn our clamps until we are close to where we wanna be and we're gonna lock it down. Now, when we're locking these for cutting, you don't want to force these um, and you want to make sure that they're facing down this way and for cutting uh, up when these are in place, you want them facing out this way. You don't want them to possibly uh, hit the router when you're routing. Right now, this is straight up against the board and if we try to move these fingers out, they're going to get caught on the board. To get around that, we're just going to loosen the knob here, loosen the one on the other side and we're just going to raise this up over the board so nothing's caught on them. Now we could loosen our fingers and slide them to come up with our actual dovetail design itself. When we're doing our layout, we want to make sure the pointed ends are facing out. So all we're going to do is we're going to flip this around and put it in place. Okay, now we're going to do our design layout here. Simply we're going to get a board, put it on here, go up all the way so it contacts your fingers, and we're going to clamp it in place on both sides. The manual talks over and over and over about do not force these clamps. If they think it's too tight, it's definitely too tight. Then what we're gonna do, we're gonna loosen our knob on the, uh, on the left and the right hand side. And we're gonna raise it up a 16th of an inch and lock it in place. Next what we're gonna do, we're gonna grab the wrench that comes with the kit. We're gonna leave this in place because this helps support your router. We're gonna loosen them up. So now we're gonna come up with our design. We're gonna get this guy right here. We wanna leave about an eighth of an inch gap here. The jig comes with this guide right here. This is exactly an eighth. If you want to use it, you can. I'm going to use it today just to give it a shot and we'll see. Okay, that's nice and lined up evenly. We're just going to go and lock this one down in place. Check it once more. Perfect, that's set. So now we're going to bring these other ones in here and we're just going to keep them together in pairs. If you play around with this more, you could space it a little bit, uh, but this is my first time really using this, so we're just gonna be a little cautious. And we're gonna do the same thing on the right here. Line it up with our little gauge, okay. That's good. Lock everything in place. Okay, now we're just gonna visualize what looks good. Now the manual even tells you that it's not that big of a deal, uh, the spacing. As long as it looks like that, I think we're gonna be fine. With all our fingers locked down, we adjusted, and all the other ones locked down. We're gonna get our clamp. We're gonna release it. We're then gonna loosen everything on both sides here. Get this. And flip it around. We're gonna set it so the indicator line is right on the left end or equal one inch line here. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and lock it down. Next, we're gonna loosen our, our vertical lock here and drop the fingers down all the way so they're nice and flush. Lock that in place. Gonna get our board, put it up through the clamp again, make sure it's nice and square and lock that in place as well. With this board locked in place, we're gonna grab one more. We're simply going to just lay it against here and then hold it with a pencil, just like that. And that line, we're gonna to use to set the depth. From there, we're gonna get our router. We're gonna set it. So our collet is right in one of the gaps right here it fits in. And you can see it's down a little bit. We're gonna adjust it. So it's right in the center of that line. Okay, we're gonna cut our tailboard here. One thing when you're using this jig, I've had a couple issues already. When you take it out, you just flip it right over. You don't flip it end for end or anything like that. Another thing to note, if you take a look, I changed my spacing here a little bit with these. When I'm going through, I'm gonna to wanna to go through here, here, and here. Let's see, not these. They don't have that U-shaped part. These are gonna be big wide dovetails right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get some of the blocking that came with it. We're gonna cut it and we're gonna put it in here to fill these two spots. 
we put the blocks in this section and this section. So when we're coming through, it's only the curved sections that are gonna be routed out. And we don't accidentally go into these sections. If you do, it's gonna create problems. We're gonna repeat this for the other tailpiece. The last tailpiece done, we're gonna unlock our clamp, remove it, make sure everything's nice and clean. We're gonna loosen this guy right here and just flip it over. Don't go like this or anything like that. That's one mistake that I'll admit I did make. And we're going to align it right here. So our notch is one above half of an inch. And when you're doing this, you put your head directly above. We're gonna align this side and we're gonna align the other side the same in the same manner. Grab another piece, lay it down here, make a mark across. We're going to have our straight bit on the router that came with the kit. We're going to go down and we're going to align it so it is right on the line. When routing this out, we're going to route out anything that is portion between these concave sections. So we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. This over here. We're not gonna route that out because it goes between two tips here. And these are straight sections, not concave like these are. This is one mistake I made initially and I wanna make sure you guys don't make the same mistake when you're doing your project as well. Outside, it's facing outside. When we route, we're gonna go right to left, right to left, right to left and chew through. Now we're gonna test it for fit. When we're cutting our pins, that's when we're always doing our testing, not when we're cutting our tails. That's why we do these last. You can see it's still tight. So now we're gonna make some adjustments on the jig to make these pins smaller so they fit perfectly between our tails. Okay, so we got our board here. We're gonna make some adjustments on the pin side. We wanna make these smaller. So what we're gonna simply do is we're gonna slide this back inside we're going to slide this back into the clamp lock it down we're going to make sure the outside is still facing outside like it should be like it was for the initial cut and we're going to go and we're going to get our notch right here remember we started on the half inch we're going to make it so this right here actually starts to go back a little bit. Now it's gonna make it so when we route, we're gonna route it on the narrower portion of this, which is gonna make it a little smaller. So we're gonna go one notch back and we're gonna see what happens. So we were on the half inch before, we're gonna go the half inch minus one. And we'll see what it looks like. We're going from half inch to half inch minus one and locking it down. When we're moving it back to make it smaller, all we're doing is making it so the collar, when it follows, it's gonna be following a smaller, narrower portion of this, which is gonna take a little bit more off. All right, so now you everything, we're going to fit it together and we'll see how it is. All right, that is a perfect fit for dovetail joints. It's nice and snug, but you don't have to pound it together with a hammer. There's a little, I'm going to chill here and a little here. That's the way it's supposed to be so we can sand everything nice and smooth. Now we're just going to repeat that process uh, on the remaining other, on the, on the other remaining other three sides and we'll be good to go. All right, so when using this jig, I made a couple mistakes. It took some time to figure out what I was doing wrong. I just want to explain it to you guys so you don't make the same mistakes as me. To begin with, when you're cutting out your pins, right? Go. Get a board of equal thickness, lay it up here, get your knife, score the edge. That'll make it so you don't have any tear out on the edge when you're cutting your pin boards like this. When I was setting this up, I made a couple mistakes. So you wanna make sure that you have your right side facing out each time, clamp it in place. When you take it off, be very careful you don't accidentally twist it like this. Right? If outside, if, if inside is supposed to be facing out, get it, flip it. So inside's facing out, you're good to go. You don't want to go flip it and then accidentally turn it the other direction or anything like that. 
Another mistake I did was when I went to go and switch sides on here and flip it. So I from went from tails to pins. You want it when you take this off, you're just gonna go and you're gonna flip it like that. You're not going to try to flip it like this or anything like that. If you do, 